Thank you, Courtney and Nicole for joining too. Um, so Nicole is, is sort of, when it comes to the word technology, a little bit more of an expert than I, but I, I know some things. Uh, so I'm gonna give you the basics and walk you through some common questions and scenarios that uh, come up a lot. So, um, and then we can sort of dive into any questions that you think of off of that and, and we'll sort of take them as they come. Uh, okay, so what I will do first is let me go ahead, I'll share my screen. And just to give you a, a quick summary of what, what we're going to touch on, the five things, we'll start real simple. Some of you may be like, wow, I don't need this. We'll start real simple with uh, basic terminology, browsers, windows, tabs, not just what those are, but what that means in relation to us at Visible Body. Um, and then we'll touch on clearing your cache and cookies. The first one being super important, specifically clearing your cache, um, can solve a lot of issues uh, that, that crop up um, when using our software. Um, then we'll just touch on the difference between our web and mobile apps that some people get a little confused about that stuff. Um, and for good reason. So we'll, we'll uh, walk through that a little bit. And um, there's something that a, a few instructors have mentioned recently that they've been using. So we wanted to uh, show you what some of your colleagues at different schools have been doing um, with using the screen recording feature within PowerPoint. So uh, ironically enough, I do not even have PowerPoint, but my colleague, uh, who some of you may know, uh, Kate Burns, she recorded just a little quickie uh, tutorial of that. So I'll play Kate um, showing you exactly how you can do that. Uh, and then lastly, we'll touch on uh, screen sharing. So um, it's one thing to just uh, share your screen like I'm doing right now, but uh, another thing to know that you could also share your iPhone screen, your iPad screen, um, if you find that more helpful too. So we'll touch on all those things. And it looks like we have our first uh, cat appearance. <laughs> uh, all right. Yes, this, for, for anybody who's wondering, um, this is Figaro and uh, she always has to make an appearance, so. And she's going away now. Um, full disclosure, my dog Roxy is next to me and she has a, She's already been doing it a little bit. She she tends to wag her tail in her sleep now. That's her new thing. So I guess she's pretty happy, uh, but hopefully she's quiet. Uh, so the first thing we'll go over is um, browsers, tabs, windows. What exactly do we mean by that? So a browser in and of itself, that's just software that allows you to use web pages, that's all it is. So what we mean there is, and what I have up, everyone is a little bit different, I usually use uh, Google Chrome. So that's my web browser. But you can see at the bottom of the screen, I also have uh, Firefox. There's also Safari, specifically if you use uh, Apple products, Safari is a popular one. And there's even something uh, like Microsoft Edge, which we, don't use as much here and uh, doesn't work as well or if at all um, on our platform. So the ones that we recommend are definitely Chrome and Firefox. Um, and Nicole might be able to speak to this as well, but as far as my experience with our customers using Safari, it will work perfectly as long as you have the most recent updated version of uh, Safari. Does that sound right to you as well, Nicole? Updated and also with the correct configuration, yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, with the correct configuration. So, yeah, so, and the thing with those web browsers is also that some of them update automatically, some of them don't, depending on what your settings are and what version you have. So just remember to always try and keep those as up to date as possible. Um, something like Safari, if you have an older version of Safari, it might cause a couple issues when you're trying to load, say, one of our apps. So just a couple of little tips there. Um, 
Now, when it comes to uh, tabs versus windows, a tab obviously is what you see at the top of my screen here. You can have multiple tabs within one window. And one of the reasons why that is relevant for us today is you may have noticed for those of you that do use courseware, I know some people on this call don't, um, if you're in there and you're launching uh, an assignment, you may have noticed that it's linking out to our app. So what it's doing is it's actually making a new tab. It's launching a new tab and it's showing the app in that new tab. So that's all we mean uh, when we talk about a tab. A new window on the other hand would be a, a, a full new entity. So that would be more along the lines of, and I don't even know if you guys will be able to see. Can you see a, a brand new window or is, Okay, so that's that's just a Zoom thing. Uh, what I did there was I basically have a whole new home screen in front of me. It doesn't tack on to this existing screen here. Um, so, uh, oh, and then the other thing, and then I'll pause for uh, any questions, is it's also relevant when it comes to those tabs, it's also relevant to our courses and our folders because when you open up one of these folders within your course uh, these will be linking out to different spots so it might open a few different tabs for you to keep everything sort of organized in their own uh, little silo uh, but it's nice because then you'll be able to come right back here to home base uh, right here to your assignment page so it's nice in that way um, organizationally that when you click on one of these assignments, it'll open a new tab for you if you're linking out to uh, a, a different app. So any questions there or anything, Courtney or Nicole, you guys wanted to tack on to the end of that? No, I think that that pretty much covered. Um, and uh, we don't have any uh, questions about, about browsers or tabs. So. Okay, yeah. Like I said, that's just the more basic stuff. But just in case, um, like Courtney said, we, we have people of varying degrees of uh, technology usage and um, we want to make sure everyone's covered. So the next thing that uh, we have, and a lot of you have heard of this, but some maybe you don't actually know what it means or how it can help solve problems. And what we mean there is... Uh, clearing your caches and your cookies. So when we talk about caches, those are just files uh, that your browser saves so that later when you go back to that website, it'll load quicker. That's sort of a basic uh, rudimentary summary of that. So, and then on the other hand, cookies are a little, are a little bit different. Cookies, uh, are files that keep track of your activity on a specific website. So they are different, but in, in, in a way you can clear both of those at the same time. So where this comes in handy here with, with Visible Body is uh, when you're clearing your caches, it's clearing outdated information. So if we make updates and you still have caches from an older version of an app or something, it might cause um, some delay or some error pages, things like that. Um, if you go in every once in a while, or if, if you're experiencing slow loading and things like that, um, I'll show you uh, an example here on Chrome, and it looks generally the same on Firefox and Safari. You'll just go up here into your settings, click on your history, and then there's your clear browser history. And you can decide, do you wanna just close, or excuse me, do you just wanna clear your caches right now, or uh, do you wanna get rid of your cookies too? Um, and you could even decide all time, last 24 hours. So you can pick and choose and specify uh, those settings there, but that is, and I'll let Nicole make a comment on this too, because at least from my perspective, uh, that simple little thing of going in, clearing your caches, 
solves tons of issues that come up, tons of technical problems where you would think it might be a big problem, but those couple clicks ends up solving it. I agree. It's actually one of the first things that we ask. Have you, can you clear your cookies and your cache? Uh, typically, we do say for all time or everything if you're in Firefox. Uh, but if you're not comfortable doing that, you can always start at a lower level a week and then move up and see if that helps. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? The uh, On the related note, uh, I think it says this. Uh, and by the way, we'll send you guys. I had referenced this at the very beginning. Um, Courtney, could you include this blog post in the email you send out? Way ahead of you. It's on my list. I figured. Yeah. So this <laughs> is sort of, yeah, this is sort of what we're basing our presentation on today. So this spells out everything that I'm talking about in nice, concise wording and, um, and that sort of thing. So, oops. Uh, so that'll be perfect. So that's how you can clear those caches and cookies. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to mention. When it comes to cookies, if you do clear those, it, the next time you try and log in somewhere, you, you'll just have to enter your password again. So there's just that one minor disturbance, I guess you could say, um, where it'll, places where you're automatically logged in. If you clear all those cookies out, you'll just have to uh, log in once more and then you're good to go. So just, just something to think about there. Uh, any questions about that? Uh, nothing yet. Okay. So good. good. Um, okay, cool. So you know what I'll touch on next is this here, the differences between our web and mobile apps. This confuses some people, so I'm glad we have a chance to sort of dive into this a little bit. Uh, so here's, here's everything as a, as a general summary. Uh, first, the web apps. The web apps are, I'd say, where most of your interaction with visible body is going to be. This is where the students will complete their assignments this is where most of that interaction is going to be. Uh, the other thing to mention is it's, there's nothing you have to, when it comes to the um, web apps, you don't actually have to download an app. That's the one thing people get a little confused about because they hear the word app and assume it's something downloadable. I have to have uh, an icon on my desktop in order to load it or think of it more along the lines of an app that we have on our phones that everyone has on their phones these days. Um, for the sake of making it nice and easy, our think of our web apps as more or less just their own web pages. So they run right on the web, right from the web browser. Uh, so you don't have to download anything at all when it comes to those web versions of our apps. Uh, let me show you where you can find those, where you can uh, jump into our web apps. So one place is down here. If you click on my apps, here are our apps here. So you can launch them right from this screen, these big icons here. If I click them, I won't open up the whole thing right now, but you can see, like I was talking about earlier, it'll give you a new tab and off you go, that's gonna load um, and set that up. So that's how you can launch the web apps. Along with that, those of you guys that use uh, courseware again, another way that you can launch an app is if you have a pre-made assignment in there that's linking out to one of those apps. So here's an example. Anytime you see what we like to write as a module assignment or almost a reading type assignment, you can always see the source there. So you can see when I click on this, it's going to launch that web version of the app in a new browser. So it does. you don't have to download anything. Um, we'll talk about the mobile apps in a minute, but the web apps just think they're browser-based. That's the best way to, uh, to think of it. 
now, if we talk about the mobile apps, and you can see those as well, if you jump down here to my apps and you scroll down a bit, this will walk you through, number one, this will walk you through how to download those mobile apps onto your uh, device. So a uh, little numbered steps there that'll walk you right through it. The mobile apps are great for uh, if you're on the go um, or if you're offline or a combination of the two. So as long as you download this, after that, it can be used offline. Everything's uh, loaded in there up front. So you don't have to have internet access um, once you start, uh, excuse me, once you have downloaded that. Now, one other thing to note about these is the mobile apps are not necessarily used for the assignments. Like I said, these are more an additional reference app. If you're on the go to do a little bit of studying, you can't really complete the assignments on the mobile version, uh, especially the quizzing. Those ones, the, uh, the engineering just isn't there quite yet where you can launch uh, our assignments and say, take a quiz on the mobile device. Think of the mobile apps as more um, just an additional or supplementary version of the app that you can use on the go. Um, but recently, and this is a nice new addition, um, there's actually now a, a bit of a connection between the, the web apps and the mobile apps um, when it comes to something like our Atlas app, our Human Anatomy Atlas app. So we won't go into too much detail on this right now, but the basic idea is within Atlas now, now you're able to make your own views, as you can see here in my library. And basically what you can do is you can save a bunch of favorites or you can save tours or essentially slideshows. So where the, uh, the web app and the mobile app come in play here is that now you'll have one overarching account, one centralized account, so that anything you make on your web version of Atlas will show up once, you're, once you pull up your mobile app on your iPhone or your Android or whatever it is, and vice versa. So you can make a favorite on your phone, save it to your My Library, and you can go on your computer later that night, and that's going to be right there in your uh, in your favorites. So in other words, uh, before this update, there were really two separate entities, um, but now there's that connection between the two uh, Atlas versions. There might just be one, uh, when you're doing that, there might just be one uh, step where you basically just have to sync uh, your existing favorites. So that you can be found here in the settings and there's your sync content button. But that's just a nice little addition that we have that um, brings those two apps closer together so you can uh, share across devices. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, I don't think I missed anything there. Were there any questions about that? that came up? No. Nope. Okay. And now I can show you, as I said, I don't actually have PowerPoint. So, uh, and it was funny when poor Kate, I asked her if she could record a video of her recording a video. Uh, the technology was tough to figure out but she was able to do it. So let me show you guys an idea. So the idea here is that um, a lot of people want to take uh, something, say a muscle action from visible body from one of our apps and plop it right into your PowerPoint without having to put a link in the PowerPoint, click on the link, open up muscle premium and then hit play. Now, what Kate will show you, let me pause this just for a second, is uh, 
you're able to use a new, I don't know how new it is, but it's new to us. Uh, you're able to use a feature within PowerPoint to basically record anything on your screen when you're in visible body and take that and just plop it right into your PowerPoint. So let me, uh, let me share that with you. And then before I do that, Courtney brought this point up to me yesterday. This, this actually comes into play in the next section, but I'll, I'll tell you it now. Um, when you're sharing your screen within Zoom, this is a good tech uh, tip. When you're sharing your Zoom screen, if you wanna play other audio, you do have to go into the menu on the top of your Zoom screen and you click the more button and then there's a button that says share sound. So if you don't do that, and I hit play on this Kate video, you guys wouldn't be able to hear it. So if you're sharing for your students, just keep that in mind because it's easy to forget. Um, and for some reason you can't save that setting. Uh, so you have to do it every time, <laughs> which is kind of annoying. So here is, uh, my colleague Kate describing how you can do that with a little bit of a screen share. So just a two minute video. And be, do let me know if you cannot hear her, but I think you should be able to. Hello everyone. My name is Kate Burns. I'm with the customer engagement department here at Visible Body. I'm really sorry I wasn't able to make the webinar today, but I did wanna make sure I uh, had the opportunity to share with you all how quick and easy it is to add visible co body content right into your PowerPoint presentations. So let me show you how to do that. One moment. All right. So now I am sharing my screen. You should see PowerPoint here. Uh, so right from uh, the Home tab, uh, just navigate to the Insert tab. It gives you all these options. One of them is right here, the Screen Recording option. Now, the moment I click on this, my PowerPoint uh, application will become clear. It will become invisible, disappear. Uh, and whatever I have underneath it pulled up, uh, which right now you can see I have the uh, Human Anatomy Atlas pulled up underneath it. So that's the thing that is right behind my PowerPoint application. So when I click the screen record button, PowerPoint disappears and it goes to the window I had open right behind it. Uh, and here we are in the Atlas. So the first step is to select the area that you'd like to record. Record the action. And we'll make sure we get the full muscle action here. And then we click uh, pause or then you can just click stop. So then it pulls that uh, screen grab right into your presentation and you can resize that, move it around, um, make any edits you need to make. And then, of course, you can play it right within uh, your PowerPoint. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful. Uh, if anybody has any questions, as always, um, please feel free to reach out and enjoy the rest of the webinar. Bye, everybody. So there's Kate. Thank you, Kate, even though she's not here. So she was actually in a she's in another training at the moment. Um, I was going to have her make a guest appearance today uh, to go through that, but she recorded it for us, so I'll I'll have to thank her again. Um, does anyone have any questions about that uh, fun little trick that you can use uh, with PowerPoint? Uh, no, uh, we have no questions about that. Although I have a question: Does Kate know that she has a voice made for radio? <laughs> because uh. Her voice is so smooth. I could have watched like 50 more minutes of that. <laughs> I know it was really well done. <laughs> I'll have, I'll tell her right after this webinar. She'll Please love that. do. <laughs> um, uh, on a related note, Courtney actually brought this up yesterday to me because um, I said, I don't have PowerPoint. And we were seeing if maybe we could show it the Google version, which is just Google Slides. Um, you, If you don't have PowerPoint and you do have uh Google Slides instead. There's also a way to do that with Google Slides. 
I think you just have to download a third party uh, widget or, or extension or, or whatever it is in order to do that. But it is possible um, through Google Slides as well. I think it's probably easier with PowerPoint because it's built right in there, but it is possible with, with Google also. Um, and uh, Matt, before you, um, what do you call it, uh, go on, we actually do have a couple of uh, late breaking questions. Sure. Um, the first is from Debbie Johnson. Um, can the students hear the recording if they watch the PowerPoint on their own? So, so if they watch, well, that particular one, so in Kate's example, the muscle actions don't have audio anyway, but the, is the question if you recorded, say one of our um, animations with audio, is that what, what I you mean? I think maybe uh, at that point, I don't think that would be a screen recording um, a thing. Uh, that would be more of just embedding a file into the, um, into the PowerPoint. Uh, Debbie clarified, um, we use Blackboard and then sometimes the students watch again later after class. So um, Debbie, for screen recordings, um, usually those don't tend to have audio. Yeah, in that's them. what I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember myself. Okay, can, uh, actually, um, one, of my, one of our colleagues, Laura, um, just chimed in, uh, you can record audio in the PowerPoint screen grab. So... Oh, perfect. So I guess you can. See, that's funny. I would have assumed it would only give you uh, something like a muscle action, but yeah, I guess you can. Um, so in that case, you could grab one of those uh, animations, say the animations in Atlas or something. Um, and you could even record that with the audio and plop it right there into your PowerPoint slide. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. Um, and then uh, from uh, Nancy Fitzgerald, um, can you screen record in Atlas? Well, so yeah, that's that's what we did there with PowerPoint. That and she actually did a screen recording within. Actually, I'm not sure if she had Muscle Premium or Atlas up, but the answer is Atlas. yes. Yeah, there isn't a screen record tool within. Atlas itself. Um, but yeah, you can use something like that, um, that outside PowerPoint recorder. Go ahead, Courtney, sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, um, you can also um, screen record, uh, if you wanted to just uh, get a file that you could embed, um, you can screen record um, in Zoom as well. If you, if you record, you know, you share your own screen and you, you can record that. Oh yeah, yep, that's true. Yep. Um, so uh, could we actually just go through that um, PowerPoint um, screen recording one more time for um, for Nancy? Oh sure, I can do that. Let me. I have to get rid of this silly menu here. Sorry. Uh, let me go in here on my other screen. I just need to find that. I close the page, but yeah, I can play that again. No problemo. I just need to go in and find it. Here. And, it uh, yeah, and if, and if Kate doesn't mind, um, I might actually include that little uh, video of hers in tomorrow's email as well. So. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so we can play it one more time though. This. Um, so here is Kate, and I think the audio should still be fine because uh, I didn't stop sharing. So um, here it is one more time. Everyone, my name is Kate Burns. I'm with the customer engagement department here at Visible Body. I'm really sorry I wasn't able to make the webinar today, but I did want to make sure I uh, had the opportunity to share with you all how quick and easy it is to add visible co body content right into your PowerPoint presentations. So let me show you how to do that. One moment. All right. So now I am sharing my screen. You should see PowerPoint here. Uh, so right from uh, the home tab, I'll just navigate to the insert tab. 
It gives you all these options. One of them is right here, the screen recording option. Now, the moment I click on this, my PowerPoint uh, application will become clear. It will become invisible, disappear. Uh, and whatever I have underneath it pulled up, uh, which right now you can see I have the uh, Human Anatomy Atlas pulled up underneath it. So that's the thing that is right behind my PowerPoint application. So when I click the screen record button, PowerPoint disappears and it goes to the window I had open right behind it. Uh, and here we are in the Atlas. So the first step is to select the area that you'd like to record. Record the action. And we'll make sure we get the full muscle action here. And then we click uh, pause or then you can just click stop. So then it pulls that uh, screen grab right into your presentation and you can resize that, move it around, um, make any edits you need to make. And then of course you can play it right within uh, your PowerPoint. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you, anybody has it. So yeah, that I hope you guys find that helpful. Um, and again, as uh, Courtney said, she'll include that in the video. And then along with that, as I'm just hiding my, uh, my menu here, uh, there's also a step-by-step -step with images uh, within the blog itself too. So you don't have to memorize what Kate said. If you forget a step or something, it'll walk you through in here also. Um, step by step, there's how you're, you're cropping your uh, image and then putting it in where you need to put it in. So that's all here within yeah, the blog. Uh, also. And Matt, if you scroll down a little bit to that screenshot, um, you can see, oh, no, up. Oh, oh, this one here? Uh, nope, one more. One more up. Right there. Yeah. So um, next to the screen recording, you can see um, Laura uh, yeah. uh, actually just mentioned the audio option in the chat. So um, uh, I, that's where um, you can record audio as well and put it into your- Perfect, computer. that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so any other questions about that portion of it? Uh, no, it seemed like them going through that one more time uh, did the trick, so. Cool. Awesome. Okay, uh, so let me pull this up again, just to reiterate one last thing, that being, uh, the screen sharing. So I think most of you by now with everyone doing all their calls at home and everything, whether that be Zoom or Teams or any of those other ones. Um, but just in case you don't share your screen much, if you're on Zoom, this is the menu at the bottom of your screen if you want to share your screen. So that's what I did today. I clicked there, uh, screen share. If you're not the host of the meeting, just one little caveat there. If you're not the host of the meeting, you might just have to request if you can share your screen, um, but that's a little different for every meeting, I think. Um, so that's how you can easily just share your desktop screen uh, nice and easy. But uh, one thing we wanted to bring up that some people just didn't know or, or haven't had a chance to do uh, is that you can uh, you can also share your mobile device as well. So in other words, uh, your Windows and Mac, uh, if you have an iPhone, or an iPad, you'll be able to share your screen using, uh, well, you can use a, a cord, um, but I would, I would say in my experience um, and in others' experience, screen mirroring is the best way to uh, share your screen if you're using your mobile device. So the, the, the walk through the steps of this that's sort of laid out here, and I'll just, I'll talk and just show you the, the uh, screenshots so that you don't have to read. Um, the first thing to remember is if, if you wanna share your mobile device, just make sure that it's on the same Wi-Fi network as your desktop, for example. Uh, from there, just click that share screen button 
And then you'll get an option with what you want to share. So today when I did this, I decided I wanted to share my desktop number one because I have two screens. Uh, it'll give you the option to something like this if you want to share your iPhone or iPad. So that's what I'd click on if I wanted to share my iPad today. Uh, from there, all you have to do is uh, go to your iPad now or your iPhone or your mobile device. And on that screen, what you'll do is in the top right corner, swipe down to get to your settings menu or your control center, I think it's called. Uh, and there you go. There's that screen mirroring button. So that button there is how you can share your screen. So you just click on share screen, choose which device you'd like to share, and then hop over to that device, click on the screen mirroring, and then you should be able to share that screen. It might just ask you um, for the name of the device just to confirm for you, uh, but then you're able to go ahead and share that. So for example, I will use that uh, a few times a week when I'm showing uh, somebody the augmented reality uh, features. So I'll share my screen via screen mirroring, but you can also do it with uh, a cable or AirPlay, which I haven't done it that way. Um, anything you guys wanted to add here in your experience, uh, Courtney or Nicole? No, um, tech, you know, when, when I, if I, you know, ever share my, uh, my device screen, it's, it's usually my iPad. So that's exactly what, what I've done in the past. And it is, it's very easy once you know where everything is, um, in, in this menu. So it's two taps of yeah. very, and then, you know, if, if you're in a class with your students, they'll be able to see everything that you're seeing on your iPad. Yeah. And that's that, it's that added bonus that if you're sharing your desktop, obviously you can't show them augmented reality, but if you're sharing a mobile device, yes, that the mobile devices only, uh, the mobile apps only have that augmented reality feature. So that's the added bonus of knowing how you can share that screen so that you can pull that up uh, in the classroom or in your office if you're teaching remotely, just to make it a little more fun and engaging. Uh, we definitely recommend using that. Oh, and then just to reiterate that other point, as part of this process, just remember that thing I mentioned earlier, where uh, don't forget to click the drop down on the top menu in Zoom and select share audio if you plan on playing something that includes audio. Any questions about that? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Um, so that is, I guess that's my crash course. Um, <laughs> The one thing that I'll reiterate, and Courtney's gonna give this to you, is everything I talked about here um, is laid out in that, and this is sort of where we got the idea and we made them in conjunction, is this uh, blog post. Has everything laid out for you, so you don't have to go back and uh, like listen to my ugly voice. If you want to, if you want to remember something from this, you could always jump in here too. Uh, and and go back and, for example, if you had a question about the, the PowerPoint sharing. Um, and then of course, you can always just email us and ask us. Uh, we're always happy to hop on a call or just answer a, a question via email, anything like that. So were there any questions outside of these things? Uh, anything that came up in the chat there? Um, 
Sarah actually just uh, asked a question, which I can answer for you right now. Um, how do you access the blog again? Um, so Sarah, I'm going to include uh, this blog post in uh, tomorrow's email. So um, you can just uh, get there right from the email or you can just go to visiblebody.com slash blog. Yeah. And uh, it'll it'll take you right there. I actually think it's the um, the most recent blog post, so it'll be the first. Yeah, thing it is. See. Yeah, and if you want to take the roundabout way, it's in here in, in resources. Yeah. But yeah, you can just do um, flash blog, and there it is. It's the first one on there. So, um, and then of course, there's all sorts of updated uh, posts in here. So not only read this one, but uh, read all the other ones too. If you have the time, yes, we have we have a we have that little menu up at the top, um, so you can uh, parse uh, the things that you want to read by by topic or category. So we have A and P, pathology, biology, ed tech. Um, we actually have um, the uh, the keeper of our blog, uh, Laura Snyder, in here with us today as well, and uh, Laura is an incredible writer. So if you are ever reading, you know, one of these blog posts and you're like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> it's because Laura's that good. Did you say she's on the call? Oh, she is. hi, Laura. Oh, so she <laughs> just joined as a sort of under the radar as a instructor. She, she did try to, uh, to fly under the radar, although she, um, she was the one who uh, gave that tip about the, uh, the audio option in PowerPoint. So. Yeah. Yeah. Laura swooping in to save the day. Um, and if I remember correctly, I think that was even updated in the blog itself. It, it's been updated to even mention that. Uh, or not the PowerPoint audio, but the uh, sharing your audio within Zoom. That's in the uh, blog itself. Yes. Yeah. So lots of good stuff there. Uh, any questions about any of this stuff or um, any pressing issues or tech tech issues that we can uh, help out with? Oh. Yes, we do. Um, from Nancy. And Nancy, I hadn't forgotten about you um, from your question earlier. So uh, Nancy has a very specific question. Uh, so she has um, Atlas Site License and... Um, she wants to know how her students can get the Atlas mobile apps by way of uh, the easy proxy server. Do you want me Ooh. to? Yeah, you can take that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I've, heard, I've seen this before and I know schools are a little different, so maybe Nicole will be able to answer this a little better. Well, hopefully, Nancy, I don't know which <laughs> school you are at uh, particularly, but um, I can say that once you, you have a regular site license as an Atlas or um, Muscle Premium or versus the Courseware site license. Those web app site licenses, usually if you scroll down from the launch screen, there's a mobile apps button and that's where you'll click in. Um, and then you should follow the instructions for either off campus or on campus. And that should allow access. If you're not getting access, you probably should have it and you can email us at support um, if you need help. And if you want to put my name on that uh, email, I'll be happy to help you. But if you have something more um, specific, I'm happy to go over it. Okay. Uh, oh, thank she you. Says, yep. Uh, she said uh, Alvin Community College, and uh, she can see the mobile app instructions, but she doesn't quite know how to get there. Okay. I think if we t do, you want to go through those now, Courtney, or should we take sure, that offline? I Okay. Um, I mean, we certainly have the time. Yeah, um, we, have, we have about 10 minutes left, so yeah. So let me, I wasn't quite prepared to share my screen, so give me a second here. <laughs> no problem, I can, so I can stop sharing uh, so that you can. I have to make sure my site license is up as well. No problem. I turn it off and on because I've uh, run into some issues. So let's see, share Thanks screen. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, does everybody see my atlas? Mm -hmm. So this is exactly what Matt had um, in courseware version, but right underneath is the mobile apps. 
Oh, I was getting worried for a second. And we have three sets of instructions um, for on-campus, off-campus, uh, or virtual remote desktop. Um, the reason why there's three is because remote desktop is actually pretty much the same as on-campus, but that's hard to explain by saying <laughs> you're off-campus, but you're really on-campus. Um, anyway, so right from there is where you should be able to click in the download or the uh, for either iPhone or the Android phones. This would be VPN or off-campus. For off-campus, you select the app, you put in your email address. I have about 40 in here. And then it sends you a verification code, which unfortunately I already have a code uh, on my own site license. Um, then from in there, you go to your email, Oh, uh, can um, yeah, can you uh, go through that one more time? Um, Nancy says her students are remote, and uh, they're reaching uh, the course by uh, link in Blackboard. So, um, okay, so it's a. I don't have Blackboard up and running right now. Um, I don't think it's any different, though. I think that they are. If it's Blackboard, though, the, is it site license for courseware? Uh, they might be just reaching um, the Atlas site license. Just, no, just, just Atlas. Atlas. Um, so I'm trying to, it might have, I think that we might have to go through support. It might be this link that you need to put in your black in Blackboard, but it would need to have that proxy information. I think I need to think about that one, Nancy. <laughs> Unfortunately, could would you mind um, putting in a support ticket for me? I'm going to drop the uh, support. Yeah, she will put in a Thank support ticket. Thank you very ticket. much. And um, yeah, and, and I'll include, um, and this is for anybody, um, the uh, support ticket um, information in tomorrow's email as well. So if you have a question that, you know, you were like, oh, you should have asked that, you know, during the, uh, the webinar and you just didn't think to, or if you're having an issue, you can just get there right from the email. Perfect. Yeah, they'll get that solved for you. Nicole and her team always get the the crazy one-off things like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't get it done right here. Yeah. That would have been nice, but uh, yeah. we'll figure it out. Yep, you always do. Yeah, yeah our, our support team is crazy fast, so they will not leave you hanging. Um, all right, we have, we have a couple more minutes left. Does anybody have any questions? Even if you think it's silly, promise you it's not. No other questions? No, I don't think so. That just means that you did your job so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I have to give Laura a lot of credit. Um, I, I sort of based my uh, presentation on that blog so that there's a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah. Like I said, Laura's just that good. So... Okay, well, we have a, oh, yay, Nancy loves the blog. That makes me so happy. And Laura, if you're still on the call, that's just, you know, more props to you because uh, you have, uh, you've got something really special there. So, yay. <laughs> there she is. Um, yeah. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have, uh, we have four minutes left. I think we can, uh, we can end it a couple of minutes early. So, um. Yeah, Matt, Nicole, thank you both so, so much. Um, so everybody um, be on the lookout for tomorrow's follow-up email. It'll have the recording. It'll have a link to the tech blog that um, Matt showed you that has uh, all of that step-by-step -step information that uh, Laura so, uh, so wonderfully uh, 
wrote out. It's very comprehensive. It's, it's very easy to follow. Um, as well as uh, support information, um, should you need to reach out to us. Or um, don't be afraid to reach out to your rep as well, um, because they are ready and primed to, uh, to give you a hand with whatever it is that you might need. So um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, I uh, can't wait to see you all for the next one. So. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.